Well, hi, folks. Welcome back to the Model 3 Man channel. And this episode is going to be filmed entirely in the car. Um, this is a little presumptuous to call this full self-driving pass or fail, but it is, after all, the version that is going out on wide release. And um, so on that basis, we're judging its merits. And I'm going to double tap, and then I'll tell you what we're doing. So I live in Lynn Valley. We're heading down into the city of North Vancouver and we're heading right down to the Capilano Mall, which is probably about five, four, five kilometers from here. Actually, 6.3, uh, according to my touchscreen. So <clears throat> we're going to do a continuous film from here till we get there, and then that's it. And I'm going to be narrating as we go, talking about, oh, come on. Uh, there's no one there, but the lights were flashing. That's good. I'm going to narrate as we go and tell you what it's doing, what it feels like in the car. I remember that MKBHD just brought out an episode in which he also uh, evaluated full self-driving. And he said that the most frequent interventions came from his embarrassment. There are probably going to be times where I do have to either put my foot on the brake or take over steering or do something for the car. Um, the number one reason I've had to do that so far is not safety, but actually just embarrassment. I'm going to try to not intervene at all as we drive. So we're traveling along the Lynn Valley Road. The car is so far doing a great job, but of course we've not really got very far. Coming up to a set of red lights, it's interesting that um, the car is able to see lights of vehicles ahead as well not just the lights and you can see down there the lights of this truck they're on when he starts to take off those lights will disappear so the car is aware of a lot more than we're actually aware of you can see now there's no steering wheel here i'm using the yoke loving the yoke and it's been great so far so no intervention at all i'm just keeping my hands on the wheel because the car insists that I apply some torsion to it. Uh, wow! Whoa! Look at the smoke belching from that truck. That's unpleasant. Anyway, uh, probably a lot of it has to do with the temperature, which at the moment is 4 degrees Celsius here in North Vancouver. So, what's coming up ahead? Well, there's another set of lights a little further. The car's extremely good at noticing and predicting slowdowns and it comes to a pretty smooth stop each time and uh, once we get through the lights we have to make a right turn you can see it up there onto the freeway and we're going to do a short stretch of freeway driving probably only about a kilometer but it'll allow us to do the entry into the highway and the exit from it Once the lights turn green, oh, I hate this, um, the exhaust fumes coming from the Silverado in front of me. A lot of kids on the sidewalk. <laughs> That's a lot of kids. Wow. Okay. And um, the car is very much aware of these little plastic dividers that help to separate the bike lane from the main car lanes. This is the final set of lights, and then we will be entering onto the Route 1 Canada, which is actually the highway that ostensibly goes all the way from the islands, on the ferry, back onto the mainland, all the way across to Eastern Canada. Sometimes it's three lanes, sometimes it's one lane, but um, it's our Trans-Canada Highway. I've got three cameras here. I've got the GoPro Hero there. I've got my iPhone 14 just filming the road ahead at a lower angle, not obscured by this. And then I've got the Fujifilm X-T4 up top there, which is filming the screen and a lot of the cabin. So we should be coming up to a right turn. Car should indicate pretty shortly. I tend to think it should do it sooner. It's doing it now. As a human, I like the idea of indicating a lot sooner so there's no people around here 
it makes this entry pretty well. There is a yield there, but there were no cars. And now it's put the speed up to 85 because the highway is 80. I like to go 10k over, so I'm going to push it up to 90. And now we have to worry about how does it enter the freeway. Well, not bad. It comes in behind a Model X. I think it'll stay in this lane because we're going to be exiting in approximately a kilometer from here or from the Westview turnoff. Those of you who are local to North Vancouver, you know the Westview turnoff. And um, then there's some tricky bits. I did the run this morning and there were a few times when I was embarrassed and I had to intervene. We're going to try not to do that today. So the first turnoff is Lonsdale. We're not going to go there. The car continues. But it does have several lane changes to make before it can get into the glide off. So just beyond the bridge that you see ahead of you there, um, it's going to have to turn right. In fact, it comes up now. So let's see. Yep, there we go. Moved into the right lane. I'm going to go a little faster. And just beyond the end of the big stone wall here, we're going to be making another lane change into the right. And of course, there's a lot of cars that come down this one. So that can be tricky. Looks like we've got a clear run now. That's great. Excellent. And now we come down to a set of lights at which we turn left. And there are two lanes. And this morning, the car embarrassed me by crossing from the outside lane into the inside lane without indicating. And rightly, I had someone behind me honk loudly. I hope it doesn't do that this time. Okay, we're going into the inside lane. That's good. Because this is the lane that goes through the lights and the other lane I'd have to merge. So it indicates, just to let people behind know that we're doing a turn. Of course, we're in a left-hand only lane, so it's pretty much self-explanatory. And uh, let's just see what happens here. If the video of me cuts off, it's not such a big deal. I'm looking at the Hero, uh, Go the GoPro, uh, is it 11, 12? It's the latest one, whatever. And the battery indicator is orange. Uh, but the uh, microphone is on that camera, and this camera is still filming, and so is that one. So if you do lose me, you've lost nothing. And I had to get it done today, because tomorrow we're off to Kauai on a week-long vacation. Now we have to set up the... Oh, it just skipped out into the outer lane, but it did indicate. Now that's crazy. Uh, it moved into the lane that is going to be disappearing pretty soon. It could have stayed in there and we would have had a clear run. The one thing that I have discovered about FSD is that lane selection, lane changes are not always correct, they're not always logical, and sometimes they're just a mess up. So we'll see what happens now. This lane uh, peters out or disappears just after the lights. So let's see what happens. Okay, it's going to have to indicate and merge. And it did. All right, it didn't have to indicate because the road actually just became one, but that I wasn't comfortable. The car right behind probably thinks I'm an idiot and uh, not very polite for not indicating. But anyway, it made it safely. There was no danger from behind and uh, the car didn't feel it had to indicate. Now, big set of lights down the bottom sometimes a tricky intersection and it also has to make a lane change and I was saying just before that interruption that if there's one fault I can find it's that it doesn't always intuitively pick the correct lane or move into it timeously. Okay here we are we're turning right. That was good. Very good. Very smooth. Very nice. Notice I have not got the music on right now. Uh, you do not want to be uh, distracted when you're running FSD beta so I want to make absolutely sure that I got the hands ready at the wheel feet ready hovering above the pedals in case I have to intervene but so far zero interventions and the GoPro Hero is still orange 
Uh, it probably will do it. We've only got about, um, what have we got? One and a half kilometers to go, something like that. And then we'll be there. So, zero interventions up to this point. Very safe driving, excepting for a stupid lane change. But that's pretty good. This is a lot different from the initial FSD beta versions. I'll put the version down here that we're running on right now. But the earlier versions were, to put it frankly, very erratic, very unreliable, and very scary. This is a lot more mature. And um, again, you can see, I had to do nothing. Now it has to go left. And look, there we go. It indicates, changes lanes quickly. And now it has to wait. Because, as you can see, the opposite traffic is coming. It keeps the indicator on. It's gone into the middle of the intersection. And that's a good thing. Now, it's going to... Uh, there we go. <laughs> that car waited politely because he couldn't quite make it across the intersection. Red Dragon saw the chance and took it. And here we go. And now it's going to have to go left. And it does. And I think it's going to turn right onto Marine Drive. It certainly chose the right lane here. It's indicating. The steering wheel is not jerking around like it used to do in the beginning. It used to... It was like, like that as it moved. It's pretty, pretty sedate. Uh, they've definitely managed to smooth out that algorithm. And um, I don't see very much of that frantic wheel turning that we used to see in the early FSD beta version. So this is good. So we're turning right here, and as you can see on here, it's a kind of a, an acute angle, maybe 75, 80 degrees, 75. And we turn back on ourselves, and then it has to get into the left lane to turn into the Capilano Mall area. I'm not sure whether it'll go into the front or it'll go behind, but it doesn't matter which one. It still gets us to the parking lot. And we get there, We'll stop, and um, so far, happy to say, no interventions. And here, the lights have gone green. Oh, but there's a, there's a person walking. So Red Dragon is very cautious, and it knows that people come before cars, come before anything. So, come on, young lady. And there she goes. Now, where's it going to go? Which lane? Okay, it needs to change. It did. Oh, wow. That was good. That was really good. So coming up ahead, it's going to have to turn left. Up, oh, gets into the exit lane. Beautifully. Comes. This is good. I mean, I was fully expecting to have at least one, maybe two interventions. So far, I could have been a dead man in the seat and it would have got me to Capilano Mall. Of course, it should have got me to Lionsgate Hospital instead if I was a dying or dead man but um, we're gonna have to see how this final corner ha is handled because we do have a left only arrow but it doesn't last very long so we'll have to see what happens and it's a cloudy gray North Vancouver day not a nice day but a good day to be filming because uh, cloudy conditions there it, it's already changed now it's we're gonna have to wait that left turn arrow is about 10 seconds and then it's gone but Red Dragon knows what to do, and there's a lot of traffic coming from that end over there. Um, there was somebody walking, but they've now exited the pedestrian crossing. We'll see what happens here. Too many cars. Absolutely too many cars. Yeah, another one coming up there. I'm pretty sure. What I do notice now is it actually enters intersections, which is good. It enters them. Um, instead of sticking at the line. So it comes in saying, whatever happens, I will be turning. And I like that. It used to just stay at the traffic light line and not move when it changed again. But entering it, okay, now it's got to go. And it does. Okay, it could be a little quicker, but that was good. And up ahead is Capilano Mall. Where is it going to go? Ah, okay. It's just his navigation ended because we're here. So I'm going to come into the, I'm going to go into the parking lot because that is a one way and I cannot enter here, but there is the entry and I'll just stop and close off quickly here. Um, 
Watch out for people pushing carts. <laughs> and I'll stop right here. Reverse into place. Uh, always forget to clean the rear view camera. Don't forget that, guys. Before you go out, clean all the cameras. Make sure they're all visible. Well, that was it. That was a, um, what was it, about a 13-minute, 16-minute uh, drive. No interventions, although inconveniently, it did stop in the middle of the street when it reached Capilano Mall. Um, that's to be expected because I should actually have dropped a pin in the parking lot and then it would have had to come round. Overall, a few things. One, I love the way it handles intersections now and it actually gets into the intersection so that um, it's made that move. Even if the lights turn red, it's going to continue as you saw back there. Number two, lane changing is still not good. There are many times, uh, many times it works very well, beautifully well, but sometimes it changes the lane and then has to change back again or doesn't change soon enough and then it finds itself stranded. But this particular run, um, six, seven kilometers, 16 minutes, no interventions, pass or fail, look, you can be the judge of that. But to, in my mind, I took a lot of flack two years back when I said, I don't think you'll ever get perfect full self-driving. There will always be some edge case that makes it difficult or challenging. Parking in a grassy field, according to the instructions of a, of a, a person directing traffic, things like that. But on well-marked roads, in our cities, in our urban areas, it's doing very well. In my book, not perfect, but definitely a pass. Please put your comments below if you think that this was not a good ride, if you think this is not uh, an acceptable level of full self-driving, or if you agree with me, uh, put your comments below. I always read them, every single comment. Mostly I reply as well. So feel free to do that, and I'll chat with you. i um, got to go back and tidy up the house for the people that are staying while we are away in Kauai. And tomorrow, it's onto the plane, six days of flying my drone, using my GoPro underwater as I scuba dive and snorkel using the phone and the Fujifilm camera on land as we enjoy six days of wonderful downtime. So thank you for watching. Thanks for always your support of the channel. And I'll see you in a week's time when I get back. Cheers for now.